I'm going to be tying the Action Jackson today. Uh, this is by far the most effective streamer pattern that I've ever fished. Um, it's an articulated pattern, and for the stinger hook, I'm going to be using an Allen Fly Fishing MP001 multi-purpose hook. It uh, has an upturned eye. Um, this particular hook is uh, has a perfect sharpness to it and uh, has a great shape. Uh, and it costs about the third of the price of its competitors. So check them out by visiting www.allenflyfishing.com. Let's begin by putting the stinger hook into the vise and attaching thread uh, just behind the eye and clipping the excess thread. You want to create a short thread base onto the hook. And go ahead and prepare one piece of marabou. Go ahead and measure the marabou against the hook shank. You want the tail to be anywhere between a half a shank length to a full shank length long. Now attach the marabou at the 50% point of the hook shank, ensuring that the marabou is evenly wrapped around the hook shank. And begin to advance your thread forward, binding down the marabou to the hook shank as you wrap. Now cut the butt ends of the marabou just behind the eye, making sure to trim off any marabou fibers that may be crowding the eye. With your thread hanging at the index point of the hook, go ahead and prepare one strand of silly legs and wrap around the hook shank just behind the eye. While holding on each leg on the near and far side of the hook shank, go ahead and begin to advance your thread back to the base of the marabou, ensuring that the silly legs remain on the near and far side of the hook shank as you wrap. Now trim the legs evenly so they extend past the marabou slightly, and prepare a 5 inch piece of uh, pine squirrel strip. While holding the end of the squirrel strip near the tail of the fly, go ahead and separate the hairs away exposing the hide and attach it to the hook shank at the 50% point with secure thread wraps. The end of the squirrel hair should be slightly shorter than the tips of the marabou. Now advance your thread forward and create a smooth thread base covering up the existing marabou and silly legs and go ahead and whip finish just behind the eye and cut off the excess thread. To create the connection point between the two hooks of the articulated pattern, Go ahead and prepare a 6 inch piece of 30 pound Berkeley braided fire line. Now feed one end of the fire line up through the eye of the hook and wrap it around the far side of the hook shank underneath the eye of the hook. Now feed that same end of fire line down through the eye of the hook and pull tight, ensuring that the fire line doesn't trap any squirrel hair forward. For the front hook of the articulated streamer pattern, I'm going to be using an Allen Fly Fishing S404. It has a straight eye, 4X long, round bend uh, streamer hook. I really like the strength and overall profile of this hook, especially the straight eye. It allows the cone to rest flush against the eye, unlike a downed eye hook where the cone slants slightly downward when set against the eye. Begin by fitting a brass or tungsten cone onto the hook and securing it to your vise. Now begin to wrap the lead wire around the hook shank 3 to 15 times. And cut the excess wire near the cone and guide the end of the wire flush against the hook shank. Now push the wire forward into the back of the cone, 
securing the cone flush against the eye of the hook. And cut off the excess lead wire, ensuring that the tag end is flush around the hook shank. Now attach your thread just behind the lead wire and go ahead and clip off the excess thread. Now create a thread dam just behind the lead wire and advance your thread forward, covering up the majority of the lead wire with thread. Now create a thread base on the hook shank that ends just in front of the barb of the hook. With your thread hanging at the end of the thread base, go ahead and grab the stinger hook you tied earlier and attach the fire line to the hook shank, ensuring that the stinger hook is facing downward when attached. To ensure that your stinger hook is an appropriate length off the bend of the hook, go ahead and pull the stinger hook forward towards the cone. The bend of the stinger hook should be in line with the eye of the hook. Now advance your thread forward binding down the fire line to the top of the hook shank as you wrap. Now lift up the fire line and advance your thread forward with it ending in line with the lead wire. To ensure that the fire line is secure to the hook shank, go ahead and grab the piece of the fire line on the far side of the hook shank and create an overhand knot around the hook shank. Now grab the other piece of fire line and create an overhand knot as well. Continue to secure the fire line to the top of the hook shank and cut off the excess fire line just behind the cone. Now advance your thread back with your thread hanging just in front of the initial tie down point of the fire line. Now grasp the pine squirrel strip that is attached to the stinger hook and pull it forward on top of the hook shank and separate the hairs of the squirrel exposing the strip. Now secure the strip to the hook shank just in front of the initial tie down point of the fire line backing, ensuring that the strip is centered on top of the hook shank when attached. Each secure thread wrap should lie on top of one another to reduce excess thread bulk. Now lift up the pine squirrel strip and advance your thread forward, ending with your thread hanging at the 50% point of the hook shank. Now grasp the pine squirrel strip and begin to wrap it around the hook shank so the height of each wrap lies next to the previous one. As you wrap, you want to palmer the hairs back towards the bend of the hook. With the hide hanging at the 25% point of the hook shank, go ahead and attach a hackle plier to the end of the squirrel strip and let it hang freely. Now wrap a silly leg around the hook shank just behind the thread. Now advance your thread back to the 25% point, securing the legs on the near and far side of the hook shank as you wrap. Now advance your thread forward with your thread hanging just behind the cone and begin to wrap and palmer the squirrel strip around the hook shank. Make sure that the silly legs are aligned on the near and far side of the hook shank as you make your first wrap.
with the hide hanging two eye lengths behind the cone. Again, attach a hackle plier to the end of the squirrel strip and let it hang freely. Now wrap another silly leg around the hook shank just behind the thread and advance your thread back to the exposed squirrel hide, securing the legs on the near and far side of the hook shank as you wrap. Begin to wrap and palmer the squirrel strip around the hook shank, ending with the strip flush against the cone. Make sure that the silly legs are aligned on the near and far side of the hook shank when you make your first wrap. Now secure the squirrel hide to the near side of the hook shank and cut off the excess hide. In preparation for the collar, go ahead and create a thread base that's an eye length long just behind the cone. Now to create the collar of the fly, go ahead and grab that pine squirrel strip that you cut off previously and go ahead and hold it vertically. Using a potato chip clip, go ahead and open up the clip and insert the hairs in between the clips, making sure that you're not binding down the hide. And now with the pair of scissors, go ahead and cut off the hide of the pine squirrel strip. Now go ahead and create a dubbing loop that is about six inches long. Now go ahead and place a dubbing loop tool at the end of the dubbing loop. While holding the dubbing loop open with your material hand, go ahead and place the potato chip clip with the squirrel hair and place each side of the thread onto each side of the squirrel hair. At this point it's very important to keep consistent thread tension on the dubbing loop. If you were to re release tension those hairs would fall out between the two pieces of thread. Now very lightly push the butt ends of the squirrel hair as close as you can to the two points of thread within the dubbing loop. While holding the dubbing loop tightly just below the hairs, go ahead and begin to spin the dubbing loop tool. As you release tension from the dubbing loop just below the hairs, the hair will begin to spin. Now continue to spin the dubbing tool and run your fingers up and down the squirrel hairs to ensure that any loose hairs come off. Now grasp the dubbing loop with a pair of hackle pliers and begin to wrap it around the hook shank, making sure to palmer the hair back towards the bend of the hook as you wrap forward. Now continue to palmer the squirrel hair firmly against the back of the cone and go ahead and tie off the dubbing loop with three to four secure thread wraps. To ensure that the squirrel hair collar stays flush against the cone, it's important that each thread wrap lays on top of one another. I like to guide the thread against the edge of the cone as I wrap. To finish this fly, go ahead and use your whip finish tool and make sure that each wrap of thread with the whip finish tool is run against the edge of the cone. This again will help ensure that the squirrel collar stays flush against the cone. and clip off the excess thread. Now cut the second set of silly legs 
so they were in line with the 50% point of the stinger hook. Now trim off the third set of silly legs so they are slightly shorter than the second pair. Using a wire cutter, go ahead and cut the front hook at the bend just behind the initial tie down point of the fire line backing. And that's how you tie the action Jackson.